Hello, I've just been uh, recording for Synchronics, just recorded a new demo on the track. And I thought today would be a good idea to give you a kit tour. I don't know whether I've done a full tour on my drum kit that I have here at the studio, my recording kit. I have two separate kits. I have a kit for recording that stays set up at the studio, stays mic'd up. I'll sometimes take the microphones off if I've got a gig that's a little bit bigger that needs better microphones. I'll use these microphones to gig with as well. I've got like a little pack that I take and add to my add to my gigging rig, put it in the car. Like a little box that fits all the microphones in nicely. Uh, and then I've got my gigging kit as well. I'll do a different kit tour on that another day when I've actually got a gig. Because we're in lockdown now, there's no gigs happening. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you the kit that stays at the studio. Uh, sometimes the symbols change um, and I switch symbols up between my recording kit and my live kit depending on what I'm doing I just have a big hard case symbol case that I keep all my favorite ones in um, and then I'll show you that I have a little pile in the corner of just full of symbols uh, not not the best well looked after but they're all in symbol cases and uh, depending on how busy I am they're either like chucked in a corner like they are now or stacked neatly I won't show you all my drums and all my snare drums, I'll do that in a different video another day, show you my snare drum collection another day. I'm thinking videos like this would be good in lockdown when there's not a lot happening. So yeah, let me show you the drum kit that I have at the studios and uh, the equipment that I use. Right, so here's the drum kit in all its glory. This is a Mapex Saturn 3. Galaxy Burst Sparkle, I absolutely love this finish, the first time I saw it I fell in love with it. I love the Mapex drums, especially this Saturn series, this Saturn 3 series, I think they're one of the best kits to hold up. You can get them fairly cheap now, but that lovely maple and walnut uh, wood sounds so good. 22 inch bass drum, 10, 12, 14, 16 toms. They sound beautiful. Uh, that's the drums. Just show you what snare drum I've got on at the minute. The one that I'm using the most right now it changes really regular. The Pearl Virgil Donati snare is getting a lot of use at the minute. Beautiful snare drum. It's actually cool because it fits in with the colour scheme of the drums as well, which is a nice added bonus, but that's not why I'm using it. And then um, just go through the heads got an Evans UV1 on this one. I switch between Evans and Remo. I'll either be a Remo uh, coated ambassador or an Evans UV1. The UV1s last ages. They're really good. I use them a lot when I'm gigging. And then Remo coated ambassador on all three of the main toms. 10, 12, 6, 10, 12, 14 sorry. Coated ambassador. They'll need changing soon. But that's what I use to record with coated heads. I also gig with coated heads now. And I've got a uh, coated Emperor on the low tom. A little bit more boomy. Cowbell. Nondescript cowbell. I use a Pearl One Live. Okay, let's go to symbols. So my symbol setup changes uh, really regularly depending on what I'm recording. But there's two things that always stay pretty much. I love these 13 inch K and Z dyno hats. They're always the same on my gigging kit and recording kit. So I take these off if I'm playing gigs and put them in the cymbal uh, case. K Dark Splash. That's my favourite splash right now. That changes. I've got several, several splash cymbals. I love splash cymbals. Uh, but that one for the last year has been getting the most use. AA Alsabor 16 inch crash, beautiful crash symbol, it's got this lovely little lip up the side, if you can see that, it just sounds great, really versatile symbol, Minor Byzance 20 inch raw bell ride, I lent this to a mate for ages and uh, I finally got it back and I fell in love with it again. So that's been getting a lot of use. My ride symbol changes loads depending on the recording. I'm sure if you've seen in the videos, I've got an old pasty that I like to use. I've got a Sabian stage ride that's surprisingly versatile, a Zildjian ping ride. I've got a Sabian Memphis ride that's really dry. 
among others, got loads of ride symbols. I can't remember the rest. But they're the main ones that get used, and this is the main one that gets used now on a lot of the covers and things that I do. A explosion crash. This one's 16 inch as well. It's really bright, nice symbols. I'm recording a bit of rock at the minute. So they get a lot of work, a lot of look in. And I do switch the main two symbols up, both live and gigging, with the ones I'll show you in a minute. Over here we've got the S Trash Crash. Diamond in the rough. So cheap this was. And a beautiful, absolutely magnificent symbol. So dark, it gives a really nice contrast to the bright symbols here. So if I want to get a little darker sound, I use that one. And then I've got some 14 inch stage hats, AAX stage hats here. These used to be my main symbols for ages, really nice. Just standard, standard uh, hi-hat symbols really. Sound great, closed door open. Also I'm a nice chick. But they get relegated to second hi-hat because of those Ks that are amazing. And then lastly, I've got this 14-inch uh, AX Mini Chinese, keeping with the AX theme. So I'm playing a lot of rock at the minute. But I've also got um, Generation X Filter China that I use here sometimes. And various other symbols. I like to do a combination. I've got a K Dry Crash. And I put the Spiral Trash on top of that and get a similar trashy sound. I'm not a big fan of Big Chinas. I haven't found one that I fell in love with yet. I keep trying. But they're always too too much for me. So I prefer smaller size chinas. Just that short, sharp burst. Right, that's the symbols. I'll just show you the other two that I use quite a lot. Got this AAX 18 inch El Sabor Picante Crash. My newest one. It's lovely, really dry. And then my favourite symbol possibly of all time. Sabian AX Omni Crash. This one's 18 inch as well. And that is such a versatile symbol. I use it as a ride as well sometimes. And I use that to gig with all the time. That's my main go to single when, symbol, not single, main go to symbol when I'm gigging. Because I use it on the left hand side as a crash and then it also makes a second ride as well. Right, that's symbols. Drumsticks, Vic Firth 5As at the minute all day long. I go through phases. I've got 5A wood tip for at the studio recording, and I use nylon tip live just because I like the sound a bit brighter, and they don't get they last a bit longer. And I also really like the Vic Firth Carmine Apice signature sticks. They're beautiful, but I can't get any in a wood finish at the minute. The only ones they were doing when I went to order my new sticks were the anniversary ones that are all black. And some people like that, but I have the trouble where I look quite rock and roll anyway. So if I go to play a function gig, I can't wear black sim. Uh, I can't have black sticks or symbols. I said symbols. Can't have black sticks because people judge me straight away, and I always set up a double pedal anyway. Just in case one breaks, so they think that I'm some heavy metal drummer coming to play on their funk gig. So I have to be careful about that. I always use normal wood coloured sticks. Hardware on this kit DW3000 pedal, apologies for all the stick dust. I haven't had any students here, so I haven't needed to clean up. DW3000 pedals, the budget line, but they work great on this kit. A lot looser than my life kit. I've got DW5000s on my gigging kit. Yamaha hi hat stand, just bog standard stand, really. And I'll show you the rest of the hardware. Now I just use a complete mishmash of hardware. I use a lot of vintage Premier stands that I got from a friend of mine. These three here are all vintage Premier stands. Let's see if that zooms in. They're built amazing, built to last. They're really, really nice. Just old vintage stands I use. That's a Tama clamp. Boom. I'm going to use just any old microphone stand. These are TGI, Tortec, whatever I can get my hands on for the microphone stands. And then Throne. Oh, that's another Tama clamp. Oh, I seem to use two Tama clamp on things then. They must be the best. Porter and Davis stool BC2. Haven't had a chance to gig this yet. The BC Gigster. 
what is a game changer here. If I'm playing metal and double bass, it's so nice. Can't get over how good it is. I can't wait to gig with it. I've played on my friend's one. And then uh, I should probably talk about headphones. Use the Shure. These are just SE215s. And I have it hooked up so my interface comes through here. I have a wire right behind me that I plug them into. So that I don't have to move very far. And then I've got the Vic Firth Extreme Isolation headphones in my massive cables there. And they work great as well. Logic Pro we're using there. These massive speakers there are just for teaching. Don't really use them while recording. Wrestling figures, massive Hasbro collector. Absolutely love it. Microphones next. It's the Sennheiser E6 O4 on all four of my toms. They just sound amazing. I know some people like to use like bass drum mics and things on the low toms, but these are doing fine for me so far. I haven't got an extensive microphone collection yet. Next on my list, like I said, I'm only just really getting into recording. I was on cheap ones up until last year. So these are working great. Short sure, SM57 on the snare drum. Vocals, rusted old Shaw sure, Beta 58A. And then kick drum. I use the Sennheiser E602. Absolutely beautiful bass drum mic. And then inside I've got an old stag bass drum mic that's just for the Porter and Davis. And then overheads. Got the SE1A pair. And these work great. They're not the most expensive, but for now, they're definitely doing a good job for me. And then my interface. I'm just using a Zoom R16 right now. That's the next thing I want to upgrade. I've definitely seen its limitations now. I'll probably keep it for recording live stuff if I want to. Because I realise that the cameras don't pick up the drums very well live. So it'd be nice to have, be able to record like an overhead kick and snare. Just to mix it a little bit better for the videos. So I'll probably keep it. But I'm definitely looking to upgrade that. It's only got 8 inputs. So you probably notice on my teaching videos. I only ever use one low tom. Because I have to unplug the second low tom. Plug the vocal mic in. Which is a nightmare. And I've had it before, I've recorded videos and completely forgotten. And that all goes into my multi-core. Got a massive Toman multi-core that sits down there under them massive cables. It's normally well hidden in the videos, but I'll just go around there and show you actually. Yeah, there's a multi-core there back there. You can't even see it. But yeah, all the cables go into there, so it's, it's a fairly tidy workspace. Going into the laptop there, Logic Pro, and then I've got the interface there right behind it. Music on the stand. Then I have a camera there for my um, teaching videos. And I have a tripod over there that I put whatever on. Look at that weird drum kit. And then I have the, the big stand behind me, the microphone stand. Goes all the way up, that's got the GoPro on. And I should say, if you're wondering why I have such a big kit, it's just for versatility, because of recording. Normally live I use a little five piece kit with a few cymbals selected. So this one I have all the cymbals and all the drums that I need to record in any style that I want. You know, some weeks I'll be playing a metal track, some weeks I'll be playing a blues track, sometimes I'll be playing a big band track, which happened a, a little while ago in the last lockdown, I recorded a video with a big band. So this kit is versatile, it tunes really easy. Sometimes I only use the snare drum, hi-hat and kick. Sometimes I only use a ride cymbal and hi-hat and two of the toms like a four-piece kit. But I just love the idea of having the whole kit set up here so that I can just sit down and I'm comfortable playing anything. If I have to play a metal track with massive drum fills, I've got the ability to do that. If I want to play a funk track that only needs a high tom and a splash cymbal, we're good. But at the same time, I might be playing something that's all on a China cymbal with trashy cymbals and be able to crash. As I said, I do change the cymbals and snare drums up really regular, depending on the style of music. But as a whole, I just love having this whole kit here that I can just jump on and be as versatile as possible. And if ever I get to the point where I'm, I'm big enough to be, you know, touring and things like that, this is my preferred size kit. A kit like this, 
um, I really enjoy and I really like. So if I'm playing with somebody like Dave Simpson where I'm allowed to use whatever I want, there's no limitations on size, a venue and things like that. Sometimes I have to take a smaller kit, but if I had my preferred choice, a kit this size is what I love. I love two low toms, I love two high toms, four, four toms, snare drum, bass drum, I'm a massive like Dave Weckle, Vinnie Cole, Utah fan. And I just love the way, and Steve Gadd as well, same setup. I love the way that they take their kit to every session so that they can play exactly how they want to play it all the time. And eventually on my gigging kit, I'm going to get a second low tom so that I can have this same setup all the time so that it doesn't matter what style of music I'm playing, what kind of band I'm playing for, I've got the ability to play to the best of my ability and use the full scope of my creativity and use all the sounds that I like on any given situation. I absolutely love that. I'm so used to playing this kit now, I feel comfortable all the time. And I can play a little four-piece kit, a lot of gigs I do, just because it looks nice, it looks smarter at a wedding or something like that. You see that as I start gigging, my setup changes dram dramatically depending on what I'm doing. But for here, like my home setup where I can just jump on it and play, this is definitely my preferred setup for now. And then I just need to upgrade my recording equipment.